Now, Zimbabwe celebrates 33 years of independence today, and according to the African Development Bank, the economy is set to grow by 5.5% this year. That's a promising turnaround after the infamous recession from 2000 to 2009, which saw the Zimbabwe economy shrink by 40%. But the country has challenges with the implementation of indigenization laws, and the true test lies perhaps in the elections to be held in July. Again, Panash Chigamatsi reports. Zimbabwe, the landlocked southern African country, is home to 12.8 million people and has been undergoing economic recovery following what has been called the last decade. The country was hit by hyperinflation, which peaked at around 79 billion percent per month in 2008, the worst case seen in the 21st century. However, in a textbook turnaround, month-on-month -month inflation bottomed at negative 3 percent in March 2009 after the newly formed Government of National Unity stabilized prices through the introduction of multiple currencies, namely the South African Rand and the US dollar. Economic growth in the Southern African state has since rebounded, with the economy growing 6 percent in 2011. Growth did, however, slow down in 2012 to 3.1 percent, with GDP at 10 billion US dollars, in line with the global economic slowdown. The country's growth was boosted by a boom in the mining industry, which contributed 44 percent to GDP. The economy still faces challenges, including political uncertainty, infrastructure and regulatory deficiencies, a large external debt burden and insufficient formal employment. Foreign investors are particularly concerned about certainty on policies like indigenization. Speaking on Zimbabwe's investment case, Deputy Prime Minister Artham Tambara noted that the government's stance on the policy is consistent and that indigenization is here to stay. 51 percent, yes, but the Zimbabwean partner, the Zimbabwean player must pay for their share. So whatever problems we've had are teething problems, but we are very focused in growing the economy. There is no point in distributing and sharing a small cake. It's more important to grow the economy and then indigenize the growth. So we are very focused to say investors can come to Zimbabwe and make money, but in the process we want Zimbabweans to be players, to be participants in the economy. On the upcoming elections, Mutambara said that the ultimate measure of political stability is whether or not the elections are free and fair. I'm certain that this election will be different from 2008. Why? Because the key protagonists are in the same government. Mm -hmm. The fact that we've worked together for four and a half years, I think, counts for something. Secondly, we've done major reforms. We have now a new constitution. Mm -hmm. Some of our major problems were arising from a flawed constitution, a dysfunctional constitution. Now we have a reasonable constitution. We've carried out a number of electoral reforms, political reforms. We have reformed some aspects of the media. And we are working together in the same government. So I think we've set in place the foundation for the possibility of a free and fair election. Despite the challenges currently faced by Zimbabwe, analysts still feel that the country offers a strong value proposition for investors. The Zimbabwe of today is very different from the one that gained independence 33 years ago. The trials and tribulations faced by the people have evolved from freedom to economic frailty. But with the right economic policies, Zimbabwe could see the renaissance it so badly needs.